So in Rule the School, we meet two boys. All right, so we, and they are going into the fourth grade, which is the um, highest grade at their school. So they're the oldest kids in their school. All right, so we have Graham and We have Graham and Raymond, all right, and so they, Raymond does not want um, Mrs. Gibson as his teacher, and he finds out that she is his teacher, um, and he kind of embarrasses, embarrasses himself in front of her, um, and so they have gone to their first day of school, and we are going to pick up in chapter four, um, that is titled Revenge, so go ahead and I'll share my camera. Oh. Okay. Revenge. I try to stay away from Mrs. Gibson as much as possible for the rest of the week. Remember, this is told from Raymond's perspective, so we're listening to Raymond talk. I didn't raise my hand to answer a question or ask to go to the bathroom, and I didn't volunteer for anything. As far as I was concerned, I still couldn't trust her. Every now and again, I would look up to find her squinty little eyes staring at me through those huge glasses. When Friday came, Graham and I walked home with Diane and Heidi. I told them about what had happened at the class list the day before school started. So what do you guys think? I asked them. What do you mean? Diane said. What I mean is, do you think Mrs. Gibson is going to do something to me? I said, like what? Heidi asked, looking confused. I don't know. You've heard all the stories about her, I said. I told him I don't think she'll do anything, Graham said. She only looks scary because she's so old. They all agreed and looked at me like I was crazy. Well, maybe you guys are right, I said. The next Monday, I decided to start raising my hand in class to stop avoiding Mrs. Gibson. The first thing I did when we got to school was to say hi to her. She gave me a crinkly smile and a raspy good morning. I sat down feeling a little more confident. The bell rang and Mrs. Gibson stood up. She looked around to see who was absent, marked them in her roll book, and then walked up to the board. Everyone, please take out a piece of paper and write down this week's spelling words she said. Write 10 words down the left side of the board. She gave us a few minutes to finish. May I have a volunteer to read the first word? Tell us what it means and use it in a sentence, she asked. Oops. I'll do it. I'll do it, Lizzie yelled out, waving her hand in the air and bouncing up and down in her chair. Okay, Lizzie, Mrs. Gibson said. Arrange. Arrange means to put things in order, Lizzie said, and my sentence is, Mrs. Gibson arranges the papers on her desk really good because she is the best teacher and the best arranger. Really well, Mrs. Gibson corrected. Lizzie looked surprised. That's why I'm at Mrs. Gibson really well, she said quickly. Thank you, Lizzie, Mrs. Gibson said. Can I get a volunteer for the next word? David raised his hand. Strange, he said. Strange means weird, like Raymond is very strange and wears strange clothes. He sat back and laughed. David, Mrs. Gibson said, why don't you pull up your desk up by mine again for today? But I didn't hit him, David said. Mrs. Gibson didn't answer, just waited patiently for him to move. Okay, next word. How about you, Raymond? She said, pointing to the next word on the board which was revenge. Revenge, I thought. Why was she asking me to read that word? Maybe she was trying to tell me that she was going to get revenge on me for the things I said about her? Um, I don't know what it means, I said. I know, I know, Lizzie said, bouncing and waving again. Mrs. Gibson waited for a few moments and turned to Lizzie. Okay, Lizzie, go ahead. Okay. 
Revenge is what you do to someone who did something mean to you. Like, I'm going to get revenge on that kid that was really mean to me at recess by punching him in the nose. Thank you, Lizzie, Mrs. Gibson said. Let's get someone from the front of the class. How about Matt? Would you like to take the next word? She went on like that through all 10 words without ever coming back to me. All of a sudden, I felt nervous again. I didn't care what Graham, Diane, and Heidi said. Mrs. Gibson was still mad at me and was planning to do something. Every week, there seemed to be one word in the spelling list that was put in there just for me. One week, it was punishment. Other week's words were bruise, injure, and damage. Graham thought it was just a coincidence, but not me. I was so nervous that I even told my mom about it. She was making some cookies in the kitchen when I recited the whole story, starting back at the day in front of the class list. Surely my own mom would understand and be worried for the safety of her only son. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Why would you say such cruel things, she said, putting down the big mixing spoon and turning to me. What you need to do, young man, is to go to school tomorrow and apologize for what you said. But mom, I begged, I can't do that. You most certainly will, and you'll do it first thing in the morning before school, she said. Now up to your room. Okay, but if something bad happens, it's your fault, I said. She didn't say anything. She just pointed to the stairs. I ran upstairs and threw myself onto my bed. I didn't want to fall asleep because I knew as soon as I did, it would be morning. Sure enough, I closed my eyes and opened them again. And it was morning. Mom already had my lunch made and was ready to drive me to school for my little chat with Mrs. Gibson. On the way, she gave me a lecture about manners and showing respect to adults. Then she gave me a kiss on the forehead and dropped me off. I walked into the room hoping she wouldn't be there, but unfortunately, she was at her desk correcting papers. Why, good morning, Raymond. You're here bright and early, she said. Yeah, I, um, came early to tell you that I'm sorry, I said. What are you sorry for, she asked, putting her red pencil down. Okay, here it goes, I said to myself. And in one breath, I blurted out, you know, the day before school when I was standing in front of the class list and I um, said a few things that maybe um, weren't so nice about a teacher. Well, I mean, about you. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I didn't mean what I said. It's just that I thought you were scary because everyone said you were and you looked a little scary, but I know you can't help that because you're old. And so when I turned and bumped into you, I was scared and have been since school started. And I don't want you to get revenge on me, so I'm sorry. I stood there trying to catch my breath. Have a seat, Raymond, Mrs. Gibson said. I sat down in Matt's desk. Raymond, I know some kids say things about me, and believe me, it's not fun getting old. But the reason I have taught school for so many years is that I enjoy working with such fine young people as you. It takes a big man to come in and apologize, she said with that wrinkly smile. Thanks, I said. Then I got up and turned to walk outside to wait for the other kids to arrive. Thank you, Raymond, she said. I'll get you in class. What? I yelled, spinning back around as chill as a chill went down my spine. Miss Stanfield? Yes, Travion. All froze, said me. Interesting. It might be your internet. I said, I'll see you in class, she answered, looking confused. Oh, right, I said. Yeah, see you in class. I hurried out the door and ran outside. I sat there wondering if she had really said, I'll get you in class, or if that was just my imagination. For the last six weeks, I've been waiting for her to take her revenge, but it was now the middle of October, and she hadn't done anything to me yet. I hoped it was my imagination and tried to forget about it. Another two weeks passed by quickly, and it was November. We got our report cards for the first term. I had all A's and B's, except I got a C plus in handwriting. Mrs. Gibson even wrote some nice comments at the bottom. Yes, Mrs. Gibson was all right. I can't believe some kids think she's creepy. There are even kids who have never been in her class who think she's mean. Can you believe that? Oh, well, none of that really mattered now because we were about to participate in the biggest event at East Mill Creek Elementary. 
the event that sets the fourth graders apart from the rest of the unfortunate younger kids. Everything was about to change because of one word, Scrooge. Each year, the fourth graders put on a play. It's always in December and it's always Scrooge. You know the story about the greedy old man who was mean to everyone and then one night he's visited by three ghosts. So he turns good and buys a turkey for Tiny Tim and his family and everyone lives happily ever after. Scrooge is a tradition at our school. I can remember who played the part of Scrooge every year since first grade. There's also a large bulletin board in a glass case in the hall in front of the school office that has pictures from the past Scrooge plays. Whoever gets the part of Scrooge is famous forever at East Mill Creek. When we tried, for, when we tried out for our parts, I thought I did pretty well and that I'd probably get the part of Scrooge, even though I kind of forgot most of my lines. I made up some new lines that sounded even better. Mrs. Barker, who's in charge of the play, told me it was very interesting. That must be good. We had to list three parts we would like just in case we didn't get picked for the part we wanted most. Then the next day they were going to list the whole cast on the stage door. Graham thought he did good at his tryout too. I hoped he'd get the part of Bob Cratchit. That way we could be in some of the same scenes together. I figured he'd probably get a good part. He and his sister were in a real play downtown last year. When I got home, I told my mom what happened at tryouts and how Mrs. Barker thought my acting was very interesting. Mom told me acting isn't for everyone and I shouldn't get discouraged if it doesn't turn out the way I think. I wasn't worried though. After all, if for some strange reason I didn't get the part of Scrooge, I would be happy with either of the two parts I listed, Bob Cratchit or the ghost of Jacob Marley. Sure, they're not as important as Scrooge, but they are still good parts. I stayed awake for a long time that night, wondering which part all my friends would get. Hopefully no one would be mad at me for getting the part they wanted. Oh well, I was sure they'd get over it. And that's all we'll read for today.